Yes, this is Tom. As you, as you can see, there are a number of documents uh, that Patrick has put up today, well, actually the last couple of days, uh, where we basically have to uh, put a lead against our labor. And uh, I guess... Okay, as I Patrick, guess I'm on the line now, Tom. Patrick, how started. Okay. You got the recording going? Yes, it's going. Okay. Okay. Posted a document up the other day, uh, basically, uh, one call a uh, non UC or a labor, new labor non UCC example. Okay, I made it a two page document, okay, trying to help you people, okay, in the process here, okay, by making a page two out of this item. So you can basically fill in if you have the capability of your in your PDF that you can type in most of the stuff right in there, identifying basically the United States Department of Labor and then the Department of Labor at your individual state. All of your securities, the labor from your securities, your physical labor payments have been going into the Department of Labor. The Department of Labor was a 1913 creation, a banking department created in March of 1913, prior to the Federal Reserve system. Uh, Leroy. Every bit of the whole thing about money in the world is all labor. Labor is the du jour money of the world, not gold and silver, not oil, not any of this other stuff, okay? Whoa. Not Federal Reserve dollars, not British pounds, not anything like that. That's, those are just tokens, like going into a casino. You take the labor out of your back pocket and you put it on the counter and basically they give you tokens in that casino, Every government out here is acting like a big casino. They're giving you tokens for your labor. In this country, your labor has been stolen from you in the process. In 1969, basically one silver dollar equaled one Federal Reserve dollar. One silver dollar today equals 17. Federal Reserve dollars. Your labor value has gone down. Where is it deposited at? It's deposited into the Department of Labor. So that they can turn around and farm it out under all the security contracts that are out there with the Federal Reserve Bank to use our labor as collateral and see, they've never paid us full labor value in the process. They give you maybe a token, $7.50, saying, oh, that's the minimum wage. That's in Federal Reserve dollars. That isn't even one silver dollar for your labor. So basically all the real the rest of the labor value that you have coming is being held in the Department of Labor. Think about this. Department of. A department or a bureau of or anything along that lines, when it says of, that means it's a derivative of something that was the original. Labor is ours. The government don't labor at all. They rip us off. So they're holding our real labor in this derivative banking office. The Constitution, like I've said before, the Constitution of the United States and the state of whatever, or the state, there was supposed to be republic. 
These were supposed to be Republic banks that we were operating with. But now we're operating with these commercial banks in the process that were created in 1871. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's what has taken place. Now, all the judicial officers out here, bar attorneys and everything, they are basically acting as solicitors trying to get you to violate the natural laws and basically solicitation is the same as prostitution. Therefore, all the judicial bar soliciting male and female ages are either pimps or whores. Why do you think women fit so damn well into the damn uh, bar system? Because they're whores. They're prostitutes. They're good at it. Legalese prostitutes. That's all that they are. And then the damn males out here are nothing but pimps. They all should be arrested. But see, the cops don't know that that's what they are is that they're really acting as pimps and whores. Therefore, any trade violation of your labor, American labor, with trade restrictions, is a violation of Title 15 U.S.C. Section 1 and 2. But you have to know that this is all about labor. Labor is the money of the world. It always has been. Okay? Full faith and credit is your labor. This country was founded upon the labor of the people. The de jure treasury of the country is the labor of our forefathers that we have an entitlement to. Therefore, it's all labor. Yeah, it's being held as gold and silver, but it's still labor. You convert labor into a mineral to exchange things for gold and silver, oil, soybeans, whatever, a commodity. That's all that this process is all about. You can go into your state, Bureau of Labor or Department of Labor, and start checking these things out. Normally they'll have a wage division. They also have a whistleblower protection division in there. You have every right to claim your labor. You come in and claim it as labor, and they can't stop you. You try and write bonds or anything like that or promissory notes, you're going to get taken down because now you're writing, you're operating in the commercial system. You want to operate in the du jour banking system with labor, your labor that's on deposit. You can take your birth certificate right down to the Department of Labor. And when I started looking at... uh, the claim form for the state of Iowa. It had a couple items there. One was overtime. Well, they see our securities, our fictional persons are laboring 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That means anything over 40 hours is overtime. And then they're violating the blue laws and everything out here because basically they continue to operate through Sunday and uh, violating the law, these securities. But over time, you don't get from the state labor department because these are governmental securities that are controlled by the SEC. Therefore, you have to go to the United States Department of Labor 
window and claim that there. And lo and behold, where they said I needed to go for overtime was the United States Department of Labor, 210 Walnut Street, Des Moines, Iowa. And basically, that is the federal building, the federal banking building. Not the courthouse, but the federal banking building. The courthouse is also a banking building, a judicial banking building. The U.S. trustee, when you go into bankruptcy, how is he setting those bills off? He's going to the Department of Labor and drawing against your labor account. You have an income tax bill. You send it to the Department of Labor to set it off. Traffic ticket, you send it to the State Department of Labor to set it off. Or you tell the clerk of the court. Or you tell the judge or the prosecuting attorney. You go and process this claim against my account at the State Labor Department. We tried the Department of Transportation. No, it's not there. The Department of Labor was set up as a banking depository so that they could put the securities in, the labor assets of the securities in, when they used the Federal Reserve Banking System, which was brought into play in the summer of uh, 2013, and then the income tax was brought in in the fall of 2013. But they needed to have a place to deposit the security labor and also the labor of the people. And that was called the Banking Window Department of Labor. It's that damn simple. Now, I put up this non-UCC. It ain't that hard. You get a registered mail label. You turn around. You fill this out. You put your global stamp on it. I put an example of that up there. You put your uh, your post office zip code, like state, two-digit state number, your nine-digit number, and then U.S. behind it. Now that's a 13-digit number. Then you put the date in red across that stamp, and you sign it in blue. And then you basically run copies of that, and you put the original into an envelope, and you register, mail it back to yourself. You keep that in an unopened envelope. You send out the certified copies, and I put the template up there for making certified copies. You sign it as uh, in blue, and you are the private attorney general, republic private attorney general. You are an, uh, an American republic citizen when you come of age, and that is over 25. Okay? And then basically you, you turn around and you will send a copy of this off to uh, that Department of Labor. I would also send a copy off to the Chief Judge to the Federal Banking District demanding what I have in the letter addressed there, which is basically a going to be a Republic consideration meritorious. And that will be, basically, you're going to demand your American Republic Bailey citizenship, U.S. Green Republic passport. No longer a blue passport. As a debtor citizen, you are a Bailey. You are a full faith and credit Bailey over the government. The government doesn't have any full faith and credit, but you do as a bailee when you claim all of your bailments, your labor bailments.
So, I posted up a letter. Basically, you can turn around. You'd also send a fax off to that chief judge. You could send one off to the U.S. trustee. And basically, make them fully aware that basically, if uh, they have any problems, you will come after them under Title 15 U.S.C. Section 1 and 2. As an American Republic citizen, a constitutional bailee of America. You're not a debtor. You are the one that gives all the power or the money to the government. But you can pull your bailments from them and then start controlling these guys. I got my UCC back from that I sent up to the Secretary of State to file a non-UCC requesting them to file it up there. Well, I finally got it back, and they referenced uh, Iowa Code Section 55 or 554.1103. I posted that up on the site also in one of the documents explaining why they can't file a non-UCC. Because if they were to file a non-UCC, they would be admitting that they are fraudulently, uh, unjustly fraudulent misrepresentation, doing duress and coercion for their profits as a bankrupt. You have to be able to read what it's saying. That's why they can't file a non-UCC. Anybody that has gotten a number from the Secretary of State, if they filed it online and said, well, I got my non-UCC online and I got a number from the Secretary of State, basically, as soon as you try and use that, the Secretary of State if they get contacted, they will void that out, and you probably will never know about it. That's basically what happened to Burdell down in Florida. When they started checking the UCC, the non-UCC out, basically the state revoked it because she had a Secretary of State number on it. You do all of these in the private under a 13-digit registration, U.S. mail registration number. A post office registration number. Then you have the power. Those UCCs can't be revoked until you revoke them or terminate them yourself. There is no time limit on them. But if you go to the state or the county to try and get these things filed, basically they're going to revoke them, and basically you may never know about it. That's the problem. And basically the only way that you guys are ever going to learn anything is to get off your ass and get out there and try this stuff. You don't wait around for anybody else. You can't run a race sitting on the sidelines. And basically the race is just about ready to come to a closure. So the longer you sit on the sidelines, the closer this whole thing is getting ready to collapse. And nobody out there is going to give you your assets. They will take it away from you. You have to fight for what's yours. But you have to fight with the right understanding. Stand tall in the saddle.
Also, basically, in this uh, uh, claim form from the state of Iowa, it has severance pay, profit sharing, and pension plans. It said, go to the United States Department of Labor, Pension and Welfare Benefits Administration. Well, that just happens to be located in the regional federal building for me in Kansas City. But once we go to one of these Department of Labor windows and order of a termination of all of our labor contracts, they should be able to take care of everything because it's nothing more than going down to the commercial bank and going in there and saying, I want to close down all my accounts. But you have to go to the right window. The loan window or the uh, agriculture window, whatever. But all of this is about labor, so you have to go to the labor window. And that's the Department of Labor. then they will coordinate with the Secret Service, uh, the U.S. Uh, Marshals, the uh, IRS, and all other organizations that are located in that federal bank. All these different offices are different banking offices. Go out and check out American Express or U.S. Bank or Wells Fargo. Go in there and look at all the different departments they have. They got one for agriculture. They got one for commercial liens. They got one for regular customers. They got they got different departments for every damn thing, just like the government does. The government is no different than these damn commercial banks, big commercial banks. So I hope you guys understand what the hell is going on here. Get off your high horse of wanting gold and silver. Your labor is what you want. Your labor credits. That belongs to you. Your labor. They can't take that away when you demand my labor back. Even if you don't want to do the non UCC, basically take a certificate of live birth, take it down there to the Labor Department window, and say, hey, I want a million dollars of my labor. I would recommend doing the non-UCC because then you stand in a different power because now you're coming in as the Bailey. Okay. Open up the lines for any questions. And the Bailey, if you have a question. The Bailey answers to nobody, correct? No, why should he? The only one he'll answer to is if you break the law by causing harm or damage. Right. Otherwise, all these other codes are basically out here as soliciting codes trying to get you to break the natural laws. Just like most women out here are breaking the natural law by getting out there and not honoring their husband and not uh, laboring with birthing a child. That's their labor that they were supposed to do. Hello. Yeah. Um, 
this, this it all kind of makes sense to me because one thing that I found recently was uh, the principal agent relationship. When when you're the agent, the principal is responsible for indemnifying you uh, against anything that you do while acting in capacity uh, that he approves, and he also has to pay you for it. So we're out here acting as agents for these instrumentalities or whatever they created for us so we can uh, contract with them, only we've never been paid. No, we, okay, let me explain something to you, okay? This UCC system is under Roman law, okay? They don't have trustee, trustor, executor, executrix on this UCC as alternate designations. Okay? Why? Because this is under Roman law, not under English law. The two different law systems that basically the people in the world are trying to operate with. The English law system is a real fraudulent system. Therefore, all trust and everything in that regard, you stay the hell away from. Okay? Because it's just another means for the bankers to try and get control over you. You never trust anybody with your assets. But Bailey Baylor is the item that is out of Roman law that is basically in the du jour system of operation. Your fictional persons are your Baileys. So when you, you when get you do the... a bailment of your credits, your inheritance labor yeah. credits that you had, you were entitled to by being born as an American or by being naturalized as an American Republic citizen. So by your signature, you did a bailment to the Bailey or to the Baylor so that he could use them. Then they turned around and used him as the person on the security, and he's been out there busting his ass for you. He's been doing the labor. So now you have to come in and claim his labor, and that's why on the UCC, the debtor becomes the bailor, and he is going to be bailing everything back to you as the bailee. So you wouldn't, you don't, you don't want to go the Chapter Seven liquidation route now. You don't need to go there. Okay. This does away with all that stuff. Okay. Try and get the word out. This is so damn simple. These. Four or five documents that I put out here in the last three days is it. Everything you need to do. You just need to go and claim your labor from the labor department. I don't know how much more simple it can be than that. Yeah, and I like that you're registering it through the post office because anytime we are you using the post office registration systems to send it back to us. Now we hold that in our hands in the du jour. Okay, we're not put. We don't trust anybody else with our shit. Yeah, I like that because anytime you give something to the state. They start to manage it for you, and they give you nothing. Yeah, they're public servants. Why would you ever trust a public servant? Yeah, it's just like the deed of trust or your your car title or anything. They it's they treat that as a as a security, and they loan against it and hypothecate it and buy other municipal bonds and. and yeah, well, you're stopping you. all that, okay? Right. Once you do this, you stop it dead cold. You notify the State Department of Labor, 
and basically also the Federal Department of Labor, that you're closing all these accounts down. And then you could tell them if you've ever sent any instruments out to some of these people, like the U.S. attorney or to the U.S. trustee or to the uh, banking courts or to the local courts, traffic tickets or whatever, that these guys are holding because they're pimps and whores out here. And basically, yeah. you, you can the, file yeah. charges against them. Per Title 15, USD Section 1 and 2. That's where the uh, those bid bonds and performance bonds come in, right? You don't worry about bid bonds and performance bonds. You worry about the payment and the and the pay the payment and the performance bonds. And that's what they've written against all of our labor contracts. Our fictional persons became employees of theirs. They're under an employment contract, construction contract, and every construction contract has to have a payment and a performance bond, and those are wrapped together as a fidelity bond. And in most cases, those fidelity bonds are to the tune of about $11.2 million. And see, you've got not only regular pay coming from those securities, but you've got overtime, you've got double time, you've got triple time, you've got holiday pay for all those damn bonds that they've been writing. See, you can claim all that. Yeah. That's awesome. When I saw about overtime and about the severance pay and about profit sharing and about pension plans and they went to the Department of Labor, I said, holy shit, right here is telling you that this is the bank, the Department of Labor, and labor is the real money of the country. Unless the people labor. If the people go on strike, the country don't operate. So if there's no labor, the country shuts down. There could be a whole bunch of gold and silver out there, but if nobody's laboring, the country don't move. That's right, because you can have all the gold in the world, and if nobody's working, there's no exchange, and there's no there's no point in having it. Just like in a casino. Basically, you've got all the coins and tokens out there on the table. But if nobody's going to bet, yeah. they don't make anything. Yeah, they're not even dealing the cards either. <laughs> yeah. Everything just shuts right down. You go on strike. That's great. I haven't checked my email in the past couple of days, but I'm going to have to look those up and, and read through them and check it out and download it. All the files, Tom's posted them on, supposedly posted them on both eConcurrent and basically on the, uh, the We the People site. Okay. So try and look for the latest uh, four or five documents posted. Okay. And then look up the definitions of the words, Okay. Yeah, I I'm a little confused. I, consideration. I, I've never heard the, 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 the Bailey, I've never, I've never researched that, so I'm going to have to dive into that one. Yeah, and basically consideration. Most people don't even think about consideration. But yeah, basically it's a, a very important item, okay, in the process, because consideration says basically... Uh, an essential of a valid and enforceable contract. It's the, it's an essential part of that. It is the and then basically condition meritorious, a condition which exists where the event upon which an obligation becomes payable 
is in the power of the obligee. That's what basically we're coming in under our uh, consideration meritorious, and basically the consideration was that when we turned 25, we were supposed to be declared free. We were supposed to get all of our deposited labor, our childhood labors and everything, our military labors given over to us, our inheritance labor. But they didn't do it because we did not demand it. Yeah. Now, when you do this UCC, that is, they can't violate that UCC. That is a universal Roman law document. And the, the, the workman is worthy of his hire, and they can't dispute that. No, what belongs to us, they can't deny us. And basically, since these basically are these constitution, and basically that's what I tried to explain before. People want to go back to uh, the Articles Confederation. That was a failed banking charter. It could not work because in that banking charter, all 13 colonies had to approve the expenditure of any money. You could never get 100% agreement out of the different uh, diversities in this country. That's why they had to revert back to the tribunal system of two out of three. That's why they wrote up the Constitution of the United States of America, banking charter and operated under the tribunal system. And see, they still can't get, hell, you can't even hardly get 50% agreement on any damn thing in this country. Even to elect officials, half the time you don't have 50% of the population voting for somebody to go into office. Because people don't know what the shit they're doing. That's the problem. And then they put these whores and pimps in there that are just raping this damn country. These English whores and pimps. Bar attorneys. That's all they are is the English whores by that damn whore, Queen of England. And now people want the whore, uh, Hillary Clinton, to be in office. And she is definitely a whore. I dare these guys to try and sue me for slander. I, I, I would love to have them take me into an open court. And I would stand them down right and left. Yeah, they can't because the truth is not slander. <laughs> That's right. And basically, one thing you ought to do with any vehicle you have is take off that uh, decal that the damn uh, dealership put on your vehicle because you're giving free advertisement and you're also being claimed that you're operating in the commercial system. You can't have not for hire on your vehicle and have that sticker on your vehicle at the same time. You're, com you're defeating the purpose. Then the other thing is, you ought to be able to find a reflective sticker out there saying no soliciting. 
All these cops that come up and want to write you a ticket, what are they doing? They're soliciting. They're pimps and whores trying to solicit you into illegally doing something that you have the right to do right now. You have the right to travel. So they're trying to solicit you to break the law of right to travel. Saying, oh no, I don't have the right to travel. I need to pay this traffic ticket. And then the judges and the prosecutor and everybody else, they are just in there also as solicitors. Trying to do a solicitation from you to get you to pay the bill. When you don't owe the bill. Yeah. You answer with the court. But see, most people don't know that basically the damn prosecutor, bar attorney, and that judge and everything, they're just acting as solicitors. They're not real people of law. They're not valid judges. Look up solicitation. Solicitor. Go through the dictionary. Start breaking the dictionary out and studying the words before you use them. Which, which dictionary are you using? I got... Uh, I don't dictionary. care which dictionary. You look at them all. Okay. Until you... You have to look at them all so you have a good understanding of what the word means. I've told you this before. For years, I've stressed, probably more than any other person out here, that's talking about this shit, that you need to know what the words mean. If you don't know what the words mean, then don't use them. Because you'll get yourself into trouble. And you never trust anybody else with your assets. I don't care what any of these gurus out here try and say. Well... For $5,000, I can get you to uh, pay your house off and everything else. Yeah, you're paying the house off for that guy. You're getting $5,000. And then when you go and try and do it, oh, it didn't work. Well, you must not have done something right. I try to give everything that I have out here away freely, trying to get people to get out there and work and learn and try and get feedback into this process. Unless you open up your eyes, basically you're not going to see things. Like what I did with this uh, wage claim form when I went into the department, State Department of Iowa labor. And I saw this and I said, holy shit. It says right here, I need to go for all my overtime down to the federal courthouse labor department. That's the labor window. You want paid? You have to go and claim your labor. From the labor window. Banking window. I've said all along that these damn courthouses and these uh, federal buildings and even the Social Security, they're all like banks. Well, they are. They've got all your accounts there. But we have to go to the right window, and that is the labor window. We've been going to the wrong windows trying to close down our labor contracts. Okay? Anybody else?
Uh, Patrick. Yeah. I got a question for you. Uh, say, say with the labor thing, could you say, for example, if you wanted a house or a car, could you go buy a car deal and just add that on? You go and get your labor, and then you get a debit card, and then you go and buy the vehicle, okay? <laughs> okay. And one last question, the thing with the birth certificate. I just, just take that down to the apartment or labor where? You would have to ask them, how do I endorse this for this much money? It's okay, a security. Then. It's a labor okay. security. Okay, I just go down there and ask them about the endorsement. Right now, I'm going to tell you, okay? I just told earlier, I don't really want to see people doing that. It don't take you but a day or so to get that registered mail UCC does. Okay, Please got you. Your shift. I got you. I agree with that. Okay, peace. I thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. All right. Do things the whole way. Don't do it half-ass. <laughs> because if you do it half-ass, you're going to be a half-ass the rest of your life. Anybody else? Have any bills or anything like that? You basically put the charge into the labor department. But I recommend you have your non-UCC done first. Then you have your proof that you are in charge. You basically somebody's in prison. You get the power of attorney over them, and then you, as the power of attorney, you would be the bailee on their bailments, their labor bailments, over to you to be able to go in and order the set-offs of those prison charges that they're holding those people in prison for. If there's a charge, there is a value that has to be set off. If they don't take the payment, then there is no charge, and basically they better let that person out right now. I don't believe that. See, you start standing up to these damn fraudulent solicitors in the right way, and basically you will back them down. I've got a question about making claims. About making what? When you said earlier that our our position to come after these wrongdoers would be under the U.S. Code Title 15, and yes. if we're if we're working as, I mean, after we have our status of, as an American citizen, and we're in the de jure side. That U.S. code apparently applies to these agents or people that are working for the government. So what I was kind of concerned about is which way the, would we be using any common law actions against these people or just the set or the code, rather the U.S. Code 15? You would be using the U.S. Title 15 if they harm you. But see, you're also, when you come out of this system, one of the things that I have in that letter that I'm sending in uh, along with my uh, uh, certified copy of my uh, non-UCC into the Department of Labor, that letter, I address that I want my republic, my green republic citizenships, Bailey passport. That now is an international yeah. 
document. That is your driver's license. That is everything that you need. That would be the Yellow Vic Road right there to have that thing in your hand because then these um, county courts couldn't run over you when you are trying to make a claim and they they don't want to do anything. They won't accept your claim. They won't do anything. Right. So and then basically you get by property or something like that. The first thing you do is you put your uh, non-UCC into your records. Now, if they want your house or something like that, you're going to be you're paying for it upright, up front. You've given your labor over to them. You're not going through a commercial bank to buy any damn property. You've got more labor out there, and you've got an inheritance labor from your forefathers. Your forefathers labor. So when you pay with Federal Reserve notes or you don't worry account. about whether it's Federal Reserve notes. Just say fucking tokens. Okay. Okay. So it mostly has to do with the, the claim that you put on it afterwards. Because you're gonna put a UCC lien on whatever you you're gonna put an attachment on anything that you Yes, you put, put in your hand. another uh, labor lien over your property. Yeah, I got you now. Yeah, you put labor in the house. I mean, shit, you go around, you vacuum in the damn room, you uh, paint the room, you uh, basically weed the garden, basically you mow the yard. I mean, that's a damn thing right there. How much damn labor does people put into mowing a fucking yard that basically is ridiculous? They ought to have a fucking cow out there uh, eating the fucking grass. And uh, 24-hour security. Yeah, at least you'd have some milk out of a damn cow or something, or meat. But people are so damn stupid. Buy a $5,000 lawnmower to mow a uh, little lot that's uh, shit. You could do a push mower and uh, get it done in about an hour. Yeah, people are so damn smart. So since the judges are only the, the main business going on in their system, these county courts, they're, they're claiming beneficial interest or title ownership over our assets through devious means. And here they've had us for, for years just trying to figure out codes and statutes, which is really the wrong, it's, it's not, it's like a fruitless. Yeah, and that's fruitless because pursuit. the people don't come into court and ask for full disclosure. Interest disclosure. What yeah, interest do you have in this case, Judge? What kickbacks are you getting out of this process? I are you going into your public employees' retirement kickback fund? I mean, when I you start standing up to them and basically demanding disclosure, do you think they're going to disclose where the fuck they're putting this shit? I wrote a letter for them to disclose on my case three years ago, and I got a letter back saying that they were judicial and they're not required under the FOIA to give that information to me. And they did it, and they sent that in writing. Didn't come out under any seal or anything like that, or the court did it? No. They, I don't even think it had a signature of any kind. They, they're no. famous for they're famous for no seals and no signatures and yeah. anything. You turn around and say. I don't accept this. You're full of shit. You're in violation of the law. Send it back to them. Say, I will prosecute. I'll take this into a federal court and prosecute you on this. Because you are in violation of the law. You're claiming to be a fucking judge and you won't disclose what the hell your kickbacks are. So what they what they call the docket, or sometimes they call it the events of the case, that doesn't contain the financial information that they have on their private or their secret side. No, it don't. It don't tell you that basically, like one guy, and I try. I've said this before. This one uh, public defender was getting five hundred dollars if he got somebody off. 
Where was the money coming from? He thought it was coming from the state. The state ain't got no money. If he said, if the guy went to jail, he got paid seventeen hundred and fifty dollars. Where'd that one come from? Hell, he's making more when the person went to jail than when he got him off. He couldn't live with it. He knew there was something wrong, but he couldn't put his finger on it because so they don't. They, see they, they don't really siphoning do. off your labor. They were putting a claim in against the Department of Labor to claim. Part of your labor. How do you think the U.S. trustee in a bankruptcy court action settles a bill? He goes downstairs. See, my U.S. trustee is located right in the same building as the Department of Labor. He goes downstairs and puts a claim in with the Department of Labor and claims some of your labor to set the bill off. But he don't tell you that's what he's doing. But that's the only way that they can do because that's the only lawful money in the country is labor. What is that instrument at the end of these court cases after they've already threatened you with uh, 20 years in jail and got you to plea bargain and do all these things and you think that you're going to get off a little bit easier and then they get you into the position or the mindset to go ahead and sign some paperwork that you don't even understand. What is that thing? Is that one of the bonds so that they can cash it in? What is that thing at the end of the court case? Where they I don't know. Sign? They will turn around and make money off of it, whatever. They're putting a claim in. You're giving them an open-ended claim. You don't know how much money is going in there. They never put a value down on half this shit. It must be something so that they can draw off your... The state or yes, something. it is. Yes, it is. They're operating in fraud. So the, They're soliciting your signature from you. You give yeah. your signature and you just fuck yourself. Yeah. That's why you say, I. no solicitation will take place. In other words, I don't deal with whores and pimps. If I want to get fucked, I'm going to go out and find a girl that will give it to me freely. We ought to have T-shirts with black writing, no solicitation, right, when we walk That's in That's right. There. Yes. Go into the local hardware store and see if there isn't a sign there that says no solicitation. Put that all over your, your car. Get a bumper sticker made out of it. No solicitation. Therefore, the cops can't come up to you and try and solicit you with a traffic ticket. Well, I got something interesting to say on that on that matter right there. I had I had uh, five sheriff deputies come to my house after um, a court um, process server came out to deliver a summons, and I wouldn't accept it. And I said the guy I told the guy to leave the property and don't leave his, your paperwork in. Uh, so he threw it down on the ground and he lunged at me and he like hit me with his elbow. And I was recording the whole thing and I chased him down my driveway and he tried to get in his car and I stood between the door and his car so he couldn't leave. So he calls 911 and so these, these sheriff guys show up and I had already, I stuck on him a no trespassing and, uh, you know, told the thing was written up where none of these agents are supposed to come on the property and so forth. And the reason I'm telling you this story is because when you give notice, and I had signs on the property, no trespassing, and it was clear that he was not allowed on the property, and he was he was delivering fraudulent paperwork with no judge's signature on it. And what? And, the and no whole reason court I'm, sale either. The whole the whole reason I'm telling you this is that five deputies were hot in hot pursuit. They were screaming in my driveway. And they were going to arrest me because this guy said he already told them on the radio that I already assaulted him. And he's, yeah, a, he's one of their. They didn't shoot you, okay? Okay. Well, when they showed up, I was standing there with with a written notice that no no trespassing and all this, and I had a, a aluminum sign there in just three different places, and they they told that guy to get off the property. They did not get me, but they. I'm not saying it would work out for everybody, but my point is that if you start to learn this stuff and you 
do your notices. I did it in the written form on paper and I put it on his windshield as well as having my property posted. I didn't get arrested. And they no, actually but, did follow the rules. Okay. Now, for anybody out here, two days. You basically fill out this non-UCC today. You put it in the mail tomorrow. And basically, if you should be able to get it back in the mail the next day because you're going to file it in your local post office, and they should deliver it the next day. Now you stand with that certified non-UCC in your hand. Let them try and break that. You say, hey, let's go to court. Take that in to the county prosecutor. Shove it up his ass. Basically, they will make notice to stay the hell away from you. I got mine. I got three of them back in less than 48 hours. Yeah. But this one, basically, this is the one you need, this last one, okay? Because it's all about labor. I didn't see that in the initial one. I was totally missing the item about labor. And then when I found out that the Labor Department was set up in 1913, prior to the Federal Reserve, I said, shit. It was another banking window they had to set up to deposit our labor. Not only our physical labor, but basically the labor of our fictional persons. And see, when we do this, UCC, we are essentially acting like Peter Pan, and we're having Wendy sell our shadow back to us. Because that's what the start of Peter Pan was all about was that Peter had to get his shadow sewn back on. So now you're coming in with this UCC and you're sewing your shadow, your fictional persons, back to you. They are no longer lost at sea. See how powerful this is? And it's a very simple little document. And then you go to the right banking window. Because they're going to that banking window that you, behind your back, that you didn't know was there. Because it's all about labor. Okay, anybody else got any questions? Come on, I know you have some people have a got question. a question. Go ahead. I have a question. Uh, so you were talking about getting this passport. I don't see that in your non-UCC letter to U.S. Department of Labor. Is that in another document that you posted? No, it's in the uh, letter that uh, basically I posted up there about the uh, going to the Department of Labor. That basically that will be one of the offshoots that we're demanding our uh, uh, Republic uh debit card, our Republic Labor credit debit card, and then we're also going to request our Republic uh, Green uh, Republic Citizenship Bay Lee passport. We gave them a copy of our status as Bay Lee. That's in the so last paragraph. Huh? It's in the last paragraph of your U.S. Yeah. Uh, letter to the U.S. Department. Yeah, and see, then you can also send a copy into the chief judge for the district. Because basically the chief judge is the one that swears you in as a uh, citizen for the United States of America or whatever citizenship you're supposed to be into. And we're basically going to demand our republic citizenship out here. Not a United States uh, commercial citizenship, so we're coming in re demanding our American Republic citizenship documentation. You can either do it as a uh, state Republic citizen or basically as a United 
States of America Constitutional Republic citizen. And so you're operating as an international organization in that capacity then. And you stand exempt for Title 22 U.S.C. Section 288A and Public Law 79-291. When you can rattle things like that off and basically stand your ground in court, they're going to just back away because they don't know half that shit, and basically they will not admit that they don't know that shit. Because they are arrogant as hell, and they think that they know all the laws. So they're not going to admit that they basically don't know something. They will just walk away from it. In other words, you scare the living shit out of them, and they're going to run for the hills. But don't do any trust. You take your assets, your labor, and you start depositing into your private enterprise or private estate or private bank. The state has no jurisdictional control over those. Any trust that's involved out there, you are basically putting your assets into the hand of somebody else, and basically the government can always come in against that other person and basically take and control over them and intimidate them and get your assets away from them. The only one that they can't intimidate is one who understands and stands their ground against them as a sole person. Okay, any other questions, comments, rebuttals? You basically eliminate HJR 192 and Public Law 7310. You don't even mention those. I understand that. You're already defeating them already. Yeah. But you don't even have to worry about them. I mean, basically, it was all about labor. This country was founded upon labor, full faith and credit. And basically, the full faith and credit was all about the labor of the people, not the labor of the government. Yeah, it was the people that gave their labor to the government to operate. And that's the full faith and credit. The government has no faith. The government has no credit. It's the people that have it. The people can go out and work 80 hours and pay something off tomorrow. But the government can't do that. Because the government is a debtor from the get-go. Because they owe their existence to the people. Okay, anything else? No other questions, comments? Not full understanding about the non-UCC? You don't need to go to the county. You don't need to go to the state to file these. You do them yourselves. Get the word out. Hey, Patrick, I have a question. Yeah. Yep. I, um, I'm not familiar with Public Law 79. I was just trying to look it up because I've been doing the HJR 192. I put it in one of the documents there. Okay. Oh, you did? Okay. I'm pretty sure I put it up there. But basically, it's uh, 
uh, pretty much uh, Title 22 U.S.C. Section 288 is a reiteration of most of the stuff that's in Public Law 79-291. And Public Law 79-291 was uh, in 1945, I think, was the date that it was uh, published. So basically, if you go into uh, uh, the statutes at large for uh, uh, 1945, you might be able to find it that way and do a word search. I just found it right now because they had a lot of Public Law 79. So, okay, awesome. Thanks. I didn't know about that. Thank you for everything that you're doing. I totally appreciate it. No, it's too damn simple. That's why yeah. basically none of these other gurus or anything want to communicate with me because they're out there making money off of the poor sap suckers out here uh, that are sucking on the damn hind kit and not getting anything out of it. In other words, Patrick, you're stopping the public law... Uh, 7310 and HGR 192 by demanding payment. Isn't that what you're doing? No, not necessarily. We're just coming in and claiming our labor. See, we're not, public law only that public law HR 192 only dealt with gold and silver tokens in the casino. Okay. They took all the well, gold. Well, I was I was actually looking at it from the aspect of it was an exemption to kick the debt down the road. You weren't going to demand payment by use of no, one no. Is what they did with that. They took all of the gold and silver that was in the state treasuries, the we the people state treasuries, and confiscated it. That's what that law did. Okay, so basically the labor is still there that basically the the states owed so much labor to the people. And that was basically deposited over into the labor department. We were given labor credits for that value. See, HR 192 really doesn't affect our labor credits that we have coming due. They just moved it from one place over to another, took the gold and silver off the table, and gave us labor credits in return. But they took all the gold and silver away from the state treasuries and brought it into the national United States bankrupt treasury to pay the bankrupt debt that the secondary corporation had accrued because of all the damned military uh, armaments and basically uh, working with these foreign bankers getting themselves into debt. Fraudulent debt when those bankers never gave shit to us to begin with. They just gave a piece of paper, and basically the government out here thinks that basically that's money. It's not. Labor is the money. Hell, the Egyptians knew that. The Babylonians, the Greeks, the Medes, Persians, even the Roman Empire knew that. And the English, basically, they're, they're a total shithead organization. I'm Irish, and we should have blown that damn place right off the map. I mean, just talk to some of these Irishmen, or Englishmen, and basically see how much of an arrogant asshole they are. You try any other method and basically you're going to fail. You try and write bonds, you try and write promissory notes. Why? 
You can basically get this thing on the road and basically have that non-UCC done in three days or two days, two to three days. Basically, as soon as you put it in the mail, you can start sending out your certified copies. You don't even have to have the registered uh, envelope delivered back to you before you can start this. So basically, hey, you turn hey. around and you do your non-UCC filing tomorrow under registered mail. You turn around, and at the same time, you go into the post office, you send out a certified letter with your certified copy of your non-UCC and your letter here to the Department of Labor. Basically, you'll probably get a visit before the end of the week to pick up all of your securities, to have them come and endorse them. So try and clean the house up a little just in case and maybe get a box of donuts and have be in hot standby. Have the coffee pot ready because you'll probably get a visitation. Make it as pleasant as possible. Because when you stand in the right, they will treat you with honor. Okay, anybody else? Okay, call tonight, Tom. Tom. Thank you, Patrick. Okay, good night. Yeah, I'm here. Good night, Patrick. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, this is going to be uh, pretty direct to get all this in the middle.